Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're making a pina colada beer, but this beer is gonna be so different from like anything I've ever done before. If you guys have seen Omni Polo's uh, Instagram posts where they have like their beer and then their soft serve on top, that's kind of what we're doing today. So in a second, I'll show you how I brewed this entire beer, what went in it, whatnot. This is pretty much a coconut lime wheat ale. And uh, what we're gonna do on top is a blended pineapple coconut milk, like sorbet essentially, because the beer's pretty dry and it's got like a nice lime flavor. The coconut doesn't come through much, but I think if we mix it with some pineapple and coconut, it's going to be utterly delightful and perfect for the pool. All right, so I got this Crandy blender and I used to work at a juice shop and we had like the most monster blenders ever. And this actually kind of reminds me of it. It's just super beefy. And yeah, so we're gonna test it out, see how it blends straight up frozen pineapple. Alrighty, so this is my coconut milk. You need to make sure to shake it. Do not get the low fat. That's not what we're doing today. No low fat in my life. All right, so I'm kind of gonna eyeball it, but let's see. I'll actually measure it. I'll measure it for y'all. All right, so let's go ahead and do four ounces. Mm, stay open. Let's go ahead and do four ounces of our super thick coconut milk. And probably a ton of pineapple. This is like all frozen together. I'm just gonna call it a handful of pineapple. And we're gonna start with that and see where we end up. Uh, you can find a link below to this blender if you desire. I'm gonna start off low. I think I need a little more, co yeah, for sure. The thing is the coconut milk, coconut milk kind of freezes uh, and gets really sticky and basically becomes a solid. There it is. Here is my wheat ale. Of course you want a nice tall glass. All right, let's see. Honestly, you could probably use a little bit more pineapple, but let's see how it sits. It's a pina colada beer float, and I'm obsessed. That's actually really tasty. It's, uh, you can tell there's beer in there, but it is very pina colada-y. So this is my take on a smoothie beer, I guess. That's really good. You know what? I don't even think I'm gonna do a review for this. This beer is tasty. It's effervescent, pineapple-y, and slightly coconutty. Definitely experiment with this, this is super fun. All right, so here is me actually making this beer. Today, I don't have a recipe. <laughs> so the idea that I'm going with today is to make a coconut lime wheat ale. Um, and the only reason it's gonna be a wheat ale is because I'm gonna use about 50% wheat as my base malt. And in the end, we're going to have a little pina colada kind of beer style. Very omni omnipolo-esque, if you will. So I'm gonna get started. Uh, I don't think you guys need much more of an intro. Uh, if you guys are curious about the equipment I'm using, if you hit show more, it's all down there. There's links for everything. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to start this. It's already pretty warm. I just grabbed it from my hot water spigot. So I actually am gonna do a little bit of a water addition. This is just two grams of calcium chloride because why not? Give it a little multi sweetness. And here's a Camden tablet. Um, I haven't been using them. I haven't noticed anything going weird with my beers. I'm only going to throw one in because, you know, it is summer, so algae is a bloomin', and I can tell you that because my pool has been in uh, urgent care for about a week. Um, so that makes me think that there's probably a little bit more chlorine in our water than usual. 
Um, so why not, you know? It's not really gonna change anything except for possibly get some chlorine out. All right, so um, let's go measure our grain and <laughs> come up with what we're actually gonna do. I know which hop I'm gonna use. It's a uh, HBC 472, I believe. And uh, it's supposed to be coconutty, so why not? We're also gonna throw in some shredded coconut that is sweetened because that's all I could find and some lime zest and probably some lime juice because we'll have all those zested limes. Okay, now that we are getting ready to mash, I figured I should probably make a recipe. So it is basically five pounds of two row, four pounds of white wheat and half a pound of honey malt. And that comes out to 2.3 kilograms of two row, 1.8 kilograms of white wheat, and 227 grams of honey malt. Um, we're also going to use HBC 472, which is supposed to be a coconutty hop uh, by Yakima Valley. And um, we're gonna do 10 grams of lime zest in the flame out and uh, I'm pretty sure I have a pound of shredded coconut we're gonna throw right in with the hops and that's gonna be two ounces of hops at the 10 minute mark which is about 54 grams and um, one pound of the shredded coconut which is about 454 grams and that could be wrong because I'm just doing math in my head all right so let's get to actually uh, uh, measuring and milling the malt I got myself these lovely Vittle vaults to hold my grain. Of course, only two will stack without collapsing. I'm setting my gap about as low as it can go, except I can't turn it, so never mind. It's slightly lower than it can go. Slightly as low as it can go. Whatever. I don't know what I'm saying. Probably type my drill. Alrighty. All right, that's a pretty fine crush. That's exactly what we wanted. And honestly, we can probably mash it right now. That thing is going real quick. With this mash, we might actually have to adjust the um, pH with a little lactic acid because um, at least when I brewed a wheat with claw hammer, those guys, uh, we discovered that the, that the wheat is not as acidic as barley is, so uh, our pH was a little high. But we have a solution for that. And a syringe. While we're here, we may as well measure out our HBC 472, just two ounces. If I can get it open. These kind of smell like galaxy, but they definitely have a weird coconutiness to a weird coconutiness to them. I think this is actually going to work out really well. All right, two ounces. And I'm gonna toss in a little yeast nutrient. We're using the Vosk Vikies for the third time um, because I want to. I'm also gonna throw in a Werflak tablet just so I don't forget it. All right, we're all measured up and ready to brew. All right, so this is about at 158. So I'm gonna go ahead and mash in. This should actually be a really easy mash because it's so light. This doesn't quite fit because it's meant for when the claw hammer is electric, but it actually holds the temperature really nice, even like that. I'm gonna set a timer for 45 minutes and check the pH in about 10 minutes to see if we need to add any acid. Our pH is sitting at about six, so I'm gonna go ahead and add just one milliliter of lactic acid just to give it a little boost. All right, I'll see you guys back here in 35 minutes. All right, so our mash is done. So we are gonna pull it and check the temp. Temp's at 151, so that is good. 
my assistant here is very excited to make some dog biscuits later. So I'm sure she cannot wait for us to finish mashing. Her name is Tookie. She's a little angel and my niece. All right, while this is draining, we're gonna start the heat again. Of course, remove your neoprene. Number one tip. When I come back, I'm gonna check my pre-boil gravity, pull this, let it dry out in the sun a bit. Uh, when you make dog biscuits, you kinda want the grain to be as dry as possible. So we're gonna attempt to do that. That just prevents you from having to have your oven on for three hours, which it's summer. You don't want that. All right, so I'll see you guys back here in a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this and just set it in my bucket. That's precisely the correct size. About six and a quarter gallons there. Oh, I guess I need my refractometer. All right, I'm gonna let this sit a bit. We're pretty close to boil. Looks like we're about 20 degrees off. And it looks like our pre-boil gravity is 12 bricks. So 12 bricks is 1.05 gravity, which I feel like is probably high. It usually is for me. So our pre-boil is supposed to be 1.045. So now we're looking at about a 5.5% beer versus like a 4 and some change. But our boil volume is a little low compared to this by like... 0.1 gallon, so it might level out, but probably not. Well, all right, I'll see you guys back here when we are ready to add our hops. Okay, so it is the last 10 minutes of the boil. Looks like we got about six gallons left, so we're right on track. Here's our pound of lovely sweetened coconut. And we're gonna attempt to get it in this hop bag. Looks dire, honestly. If you get a little overspill, who cares? A lot of overspill. Why am I so bad at this? That is a lot of coconut. And for this beer, we're putting our hops in our coconut and drinking them all up. That is our two ounces of HBC 472, which basically smells like coconut itself. I'm gonna throw that in the hot bag, just let it boil. See if I can tie a knot this time. Yeah, not really. Alrighty. And our Werfelock tablet. So after the beer's all cooled down, we're actually gonna add our lime to our coconut beer. So I guess at some point we will be putting our lime in our coconut. This already smells like a coconut cream pie, honestly. I'm also gonna throw in my chiller. See if I can get this so that it's not in the way. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my hoses. That's actually probably gonna burn if it's that far down. All right, so it's been 10 minutes. I'm gonna cut my heat and start my chiller. The one thing about using coconut in the boil is it is pretty oily, so our head is probably not gonna be great on this. Um, the wheat usually helps a bit. All right, so once this is chilled down, I will meet you guys back here with the fermenter and some yeast. All right, we're all chilled down. This is sitting right at 80, which is fine. We're gonna use a Kvike, Vos, uh, Vos Kvike yeast, um, the same one I've been using for the last two brews. Um, which means I don't have to clean my fermenter. This is one of my favorite things to do because I don't like cleaning this thing or any fermenter, really. So I'm just going to basically connect my hose, drape it in here. I'm going to, once it's like halfway full, throw in my eight ounces of lime juice and 10 grams of lime zest and seal it up and throw it in the garage for it to ferment. This will probably ferment out in like four days, honestly, I'm hoping so, because I'm going out of town again and I want this to be done before I leave.
We're gonna hope that this sinks to the bottom and doesn't clog my floating dip tube. All right, so our original gravity is about 12 and a half. Our original gravity was supposed to be 1.049. So we're only about 0.03 over. We should get a 5.1% beer. All right, so I'm gonna seal this up, throw on my spunding valve, and let it sit in the garage.